good morning students today's we are going to start a new topic the healthcare organization and policy and the first topic that we are going to study here is health hospitals and healthcare organizations okay hospitals and healthcare organizations so let us see what a, what is the difference between a hospital and healthcare organization and what it means okay you all know hospital so let us see what healthcare organization is also healthcare organizations are large groups of people usually structured on bureaucratic means they have a rule for the structure and they are impersonal okay impersonal means they don't even know each other but they work together for a particular objective okay so it is large group of people there is a structure and it is impersonal that is people don't know who all who else is working in that organization and but they all work towards a common goal that is specific objective so that is a healthcare organization whereas hospital means it is from a latin word called hospitalis okay and later it became it was also a french word which means hospice which means a host or a guest so a hospital is the host means you are keeping people you are welcoming people who are sick and the sick people are the guests that is how the hospital got its name so let us see the definition of a hospital a hospital is a healthcare institution with a organized medical and professional staff okay it's a simple word it's an organized medical and professional staff with permanent facilities okay so sorry so it is a there are permanent facilities in the hospital so what are the permanent facilities in the hospital there are inpatient beds outpatient wards okay and there are people who provide medical nursing and other care to the sick people so hospital is a healthcare institution with an organized medical and professional staff that has permanent facilities like inpatients and the hospitals also provide medical nursing and other healthcare to the patients okay so let us see what are the functions of the hospital just remember karigiri hospital you will remember all this so preventive function so that is we are preventing people from getting disease okay next is curative function so those who come to us with the disease we are curing the disease we are treating the disease then training karigiri hospital does a lot of training so that is training function and research we do a lot of research in leprosy and other diseases so research function so let us see each one in little in detail preventive function it is one of the emerging functions of the hospital okay those days 100 years back people were looking at only treating people who came to the hospital who were sick but now prevention is much more important you would have heard from a young age prevention is better than cure so instead of waiting for people to come to us with sickness we are going to the community and teaching them providing health education and making sure that they prevent disease we tell them to stop smoking before they get lung cancer we tell them to do exercises before they get heart attack so that is preventive function next is curative function curative means you are treating people who come to you with disease that is the major function of most hospitals so we have enough health member staff like physicians nurses dietitians health educators medical sociologists physiotherapists all these people what do we do we give treatment to the sick people who come to us and cure them so that is curative function next is training function any hospital any organization should train if not people will not get knowledge okay whatever knowledge that we have it should be passed on to other people so it is a secondary function curative function is a primary function training is a secondary function so even people who are already working like doctors nurses they need re- regular training because new newer diseases will come like this corona virus for example so if corona virus stays with us for another 10 years then people doctors and nurses have to go for training so that they know how to get how to provide treatment for the patients with disease so training is a very important part of every hospital and healthcare organization 
then the research function okay so research means research is very very important i have i go on telling the importance of research to all of you without research the future is dim that is with research the future future is bright because whatever we learn today is based on people who have done research in the past whatever treatment that we are going to give in the future is based on research that is going on now so that is called evidence based practice okay whatever treatments that we give patients based on research is called evidence based practice research provides evidence okay so evidence based practice so how is hospital and healthcare organization related hospital is a healthcare organization okay we already studied the definition of healthcare organization it is a large institution which functions for a specific purpose so hospital as well as healthcare organization they all function so that people will not become sick and sick people will get better okay so professional healthcare today is provided through formal organizations 200 years back if somebody was sick the nurse or the doctor will go to the house of the patient but today the patients visit the doctor in their office they book an appointment and then all their records previous records previous illnesses is maintained in the computer or in the medical records and the doctor can retrieve that to check what problem the patient has had and then the treatment is given based on the medical records so that these are all functions of a hospital or healthcare organization okay so individual hospitals like karigiri are there but there are also chain of hospitals you know aims for example that is a chain of hospitals fortis hospital apollo hospital there is apollo hospital in delhi there is one in chennai there are many in chennai there is one near chitur so it is a chain of hospitals okay that is a private chain of hospitals the government itself has a chain of hospitals one example is the british national health service all the hospitals in the country uk come under the british nhs or the national health service so these are called healthcare organizations they are large organizations okay karigiri is an example of hospital whereas apollo is a example of healthcare organization even the government hospital is part of healthcare organization okay <clears throat> then who works in the hospitals and healthcare organizations doctors nurses physiotherapists occupational therapists pharmacists medical sociologists lab technicians multi purpose health workers prosthetists orthodontists medical records technicians field workers the list keeps going on and on there are so many people who work in the hospital or healthcare organization okay so each of these people should behave in a professional way and they should work as part of a team if somebody says i am a big shot i work alone i can work and make the patient better it is not possible every single person should work as a team and nobody can work in isolation then only the hospital will benefit and the patient will benefit okay then we come to regulation of hospital or healthcare organization what is regulation means rules and regulations so how it is uh, maintained okay so the rules and regulations are most of the people are professionals they already know what is their role in the hospital or organization for example a nurse is part of the indian nursing council so when she studies the course itself she knows what work she has to do a doctor is part of the indian medical council so he knows what he should do what he should not do okay same way every course they are learning that course they are completing their duration of course so that they know what work they have to do okay so every person has a is a professional they know what role they have to play in the hospital or organization but other than this the government hospitals they are under the dean of the hospital but who who is the head of the deans all these deans it is the health secretary you know when corona virus you heard a lot about somebody called dr bila rajesh who is a ias officer who is the secretary to the health minister okay health secretary she is all ias officers are called the bureaucracy so in any country 
the health care organizations come under the bureaucracy or the government okay then only it will have uniform rules and regulations all over the country okay so but individual hospitals like karigiri who does it come under we have our own board like that every hospital will have its management okay and this management is also under the government because we are part of the clinical establishment act every hospital every clinic every nursing home should be part of the clinical establishment act because the government has formed rules and regulations based on which every hospital functions okay so next we'll see what is community care and the healthcare organization okay previously we were telling about hospital and hospital based care but preventive action means we have to go to the community also okay so community care is part of the healthcare organization so medical sociologists play a major role in the community care so previously hospital means it is a, an organization which is pa- present in a particular location like for example karigiri hospital is located in uh, karigiri village and it is having a boundary but that does not mean karigiri hospitals work is limited to that place we have field workers who go to different villages and promote health they do healthcare in the field we are not limited to a particular area same way cmc is not limited to its campus they do field work they do community work they do it in rusha and other places so that is called community care okay but in spite of all this there can be conflict between professionals and bureaucracy this will keep coming again and again in other chapters also so what is a conflict between a professional who is a professional a doctor a nurse is a professional who is a bureaucrat bureaucrat is the ias officer who is following the minister's uh, rules okay so there can be conflict between people working in the hospitals and people making the rules okay so this can interfere with the patient's welfare sometimes patients will suffer because the hospital doctors and bureaucrats are fighting with each other so that is a problem so this can sometimes affect the patient care but usually because ias officers and doctors are professionals they solve their own problems and conflicts without affecting the patient care activities so let us see what are the types of hospitals and healthcare organizations based on the type of service that is being provided we can divide the hospitals and healthcare organizations into general hospital specialty hospital and community hospital general hospital is a hospital which provides all type of care like medical surgical og emergency diagnosis lab services so lot of general services are available specialty hospitals like pediatric hospital psychiatric hospital eye hospital cardiac hospital ortho hospital these are specialty hospital they cater to only one group of people for example cmc in bagayam has psychiatric hospital cmc in shell eye hospital has eye hospital alone whereas cmc main campus is a general hospital it treats all kinds of patients so like that we have specialty hospitals and general hospitals same way we also have community hospitals they are like a general hospital but it is for a specific community in one particular area for that group of people it is present so this is a classification based on type of service now we'll see the classification based on type of pe- service and people served okay so primary health care so government primary health care centers are there these are called phcs okay phc is a gone it it is the most basic form of health care which is for the community so the primary health care center is involved in various activities like family planning immunization prevention of local diseases treatment of diseases and injuries essential facilities health education food and nutrition safe drinking water for a particular area okay so every village or every small area has a phc so that the people working in that phc one medical officer who is working in that phc the phc is staffed by one medical officer and paramedical staff and they serve 30000 people in the plains and 20000 people in the hilly areas so 
each PHC has six subcenters. So the sub people of the subcenter are one auxiliary midwife and one multi-purpose health worker. They serve a population of three thousand five thousand people in the plains. So each PHC has six subcenters. So six into five thousand, they serve thirty thousand population. And what do they do? They are involved in all these activities: care of the mother and child, family planning, all the things which I have told you. So that is the most basic. That is the structure of the primary health care system in India. So that every individual. So thirty thousand people have one doctor and one nurse, and they also have five auxiliary nurses and many uh, multi-purpose health workers. So they are responsible for that area. Then the next level is the secondary health care. After the primary comes the secondary. So secondary health care means it is the second tier of a hospital. So PHCs they treat the most basic diseases. Then, if the patient is more serious, they are referred to the secondary hospital. Usually, secondary hospitals are the district hospitals and community health centers that are present at the block level. Finally, tertiary health center. Tertiary health center is the third level of health system, and these health systems are usually in the district headquarters. Vellore is a district headquarter. So, which is the tertiary hospital here? Under the government, we have the Adukambare Government Medical College Hospital. So that is a tertiary healthcare. Vellore is lucky to have private tertiary hospital also, which is CMC. What are the specialties of tertiary hospitals? They have ICUs. They have advanced med medical and diagnostic services. They have specialized medical personnel. That is, they can treat heart attacks. Heart specialists are there. All kinds of specialists are there. So that is how the tertiary tertiary care system is present, and usually it is part of a medical college or an advanced medical research institute. All India Institute of Medical Sciences (AIMS) is one tertiary health center. CMC Hospital is a tertiary health center. Adukambare Government Hospital, and same way, every medical college hospital in every district headquarters, like Chengalpet Medical College. Uh, Madras Medical College, Stanley Medical College, Tiruvannamalai Medical College. They are all tertiary healthcare centers. So where does Karigiri come under? Karigiri comes under secondary healthcare centers, and we are also a private hospital. So we, we'll, the next category is classification based on ownership. It is based on who is the owner for the hospital. So the first one is the government organizations. PHCs. Tertiary hospitals are all owned by the government, except hospitals like CMC. All the government hospitals are owned by government, so they are owned, administered, and controlled by government. Because government owns these hospitals, the treatment is free for the patients. Okay, so some of them may pay for some services in the government hospital, but it is mostly free. And all the government hospitals come under the Ministry of Health. It also comes under the university. So the Adukambare Hospital comes under MGR Medical University, of which you are also the same part of the same university. Some hospitals, there is one hospital called Armed Forces Medical College in Pune, which comes under the military uh, leadership. Then there are hospitals which are formed by the health insurance organizations and other health care organizations. So based on the government ownership, there are many hospitals. Next NGOs or non-government organizations. Non-government organizations may be for two ways. One is for profit, not for profit. Karigiri is a hospital which is not for profit. Profit. It is a voluntary health agency. It is owned and operated by non-profit groups or organizations. Usually religious bodies or community bodies. So the original. cost of investment of building the hospital and all the other expenses is obtained through donation whereas there are other profit organizations hospitals like apollo hospital fortis hospital all these are for profit organizations they are owned operated and controlled by individuals or groups or private organizations okay so that is about hospitals and healthcare organizations so let us see in the future what is the role of health hospitals healthcare organizations and medical sociologists okay 
டில் மெடிக்கல் டில் நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டீஸ் மெடிக்கல் சோஷியாலஜிஸ்ட் வேர் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் ஹெல்த் கேர் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல்ஸ் அலோன் தேவர் நாட் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் த ஃபீல்ட் பட் நவ் யூ நோ தேர் இஸ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் டெவலப்மெண்ட் இன் டெக்னாலஜி டெக்னாலஜி மீன்ஸ் வி ஆர் யூசிங் செல்ஃபோன்ஸ் வி ஆர் யூசிங் அதர் டெக்னாலஜிஸ் ஆப்ஸ் ஓகே ஸோ டெலிமெடிசன் இஸ் பிகமிங் மோர் பாப்புலர் ஸோ எஸ்பெஷலி டூரிங் கொரோனா வைரஸ் யூ வுட் ஹவ் சீன் அட்வர்டைஸ்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஆன் டிவி சேயிங் யூ கேன் கன்சல்ட் அ டாக்டர் த்ரூ யுவர் ஃபோன் ஸோ த டாக்டர் வில் லிசன் டு யுவர் சைன்ஸ் அண்ட் சிம்டம்ஸ் விச் யூ டெல் ஆன் த ஃபோன் அண்ட் தென் தே வில் டெல் யூ த ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் தட் யூ ஹாவ் டு டேக் தட் இஸ் டெலி மெடிசன் ஸோ த இண்டிவிஜுவல் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல்ஸ் ஆர் டூயிங் ஹெல்த் கேர் இன் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் வேஸ் பட் த மெயின் ஃபோக்கஸ் இஸ் ஆன் ப்ரைமரி கேர் சர்வீசஸ் பிகாஸ் த அன்எஜுகேட்டட் இல்லிட்ரேட் புவர் பீப்புள் தே நீட் தே ஃபஸ்ட் கோ டு த ப்ரைமரி ஹெல்த் கேர் so that is where medical sociologists have a great role to play both in preventive health care and health education so you go into the community and prevent diseases from occurring and also whoever gets diseases you are guiding them to the right place right place either to the tertiary hospital or the primary health care hospital slowly the boundaries are being redrawn okay initially doctors means they had more power they were the people who made all the decisions but now there are so many professions that there are medical sociologists there are nurses there are pharmacists there are nurse, uh, uh, lab technicians prosthetists orthodontists so each person has their own professional boundary so they work within their their own area and this is what is going to be the future so every profession they will have to become experts in their own field then the patient will benefit okay it is not that healthcare organization means only doctors will treat but every profession has their own role to play in the healthcare organization okay so we have finished the first topic hospitals and healthcare organizations in the fourth chapter now we'll go to the second topic which is privatization today i'm going to deal with privatization and also managerialism which are the first three topics privatization what is privatization the topic privatization means you know in the name itself you know private means private hospital so that is privatization the process of making a government institution into a private hospital is called privatization okay so the government itself makes rules and regulations that makes or allows private hospitals to set up hospitals that is privatization okay so the role of the public health sector is limited so india has not come to that stage where public health sector is limited but private hospitals are given more freedom okay so that is privatization so let us see what are the public hospitals what are private hospitals public sector hospitals are the government hospitals aims and phcs which we have already studied about okay all the state hospitals come under the ministry of health and the national boards then others they come under the regional or local state government and public corporations you know bhcl has a hospital so they are under the they are still government hospitals but under a public corporation because bhcl is a government uh, company then private sector has hospitals example cmc apollo fortis and other hospitals that do not belong to the government here we have already seen in the last chapter there are two types one is not for profit other is for profit for profit is re- driven by returns that is they want to make profit all the clinics that you find in velour uh, sandhya hospital akshaya hospital uh, narvi hospital all these are for profit hospitals not for profit hospitals are mission driven they are hospitals like cmc hospital karigiri because they are run on community based or religious charitable and ngos so their aim is not to make money but to help the poor people or a particular community okay so that is the private and public hospitals hope you understood the difference so let us see what is what is the importance about private and public hospitals usually generally people what do you feel you all know about cmc you all know about government hospital if somebody in your family becomes sick where will you take them 
you will probably take them to cmc or if you do not have money you will take them to the government hospital so people feel that government hospitals do not have the best resources they feel private hospitals give better treatment but in developed countries you know in countries like uk us people prefer public hospitals because they have all the facilities the government is giving a lot of funds to maintain the hospital so they are better than private hospitals but let us see what is the reason for privatization internal reasons within the pro- hospital what are the reasons for privatization dissatisfaction with poorly managed public service suppose a government hospital people are not satisfied because it is poorly managed then they would prefer private hospitals okay privatization is part of the general social process every company that is part of a country was owned by government slowly it is being privatized okay same way hospitals are also being privatized you recently heard even the railways are being privatized there are private railways like that it is a social process privatization is a social process then reintroduction of private practice whatever public doctors do that is whatever government doctors do they also do private practice each of them have a clinic in the evening they do private practice because their motive is to earn money so that is these are the reasons for privatization what are the external reasons for privatization the patient's choice you know if you are very rich where will you go you will prefer to go to a hospital which is very posh very neat which has all the facilities and has expert doctors so people who have money prefer to go to a private hospital so that they will have good quality health care so because of this reason many private hospitals are being set up in private hospitals it is market oriented so for example whenever a new treatment or a new equipment is created private hospitals will buy that they will advertise that whereas have you ever seen adukambare hospital advertising no whereas you would have seen narvi hospital uh, nalam hospital they all give advertisements even uh, narayani hospital give advertisements because they want to buy the best equipment and provide best treatment so based on the competition they uh, do their marketing so that is another reason for privatization then quality competition and better overall performance is seen in private hospitals you know the best hospital in india is cmc why is the government hospital is not best the reason is because private hospitals have better quality okay so let us see the benefits of privatization first thing is it overcomes monopoly what is monopoly monopoly means only one organization running the whole thing okay so suppose only one organization runs the whole scene what will happen then they will become monopoly they will not give freedom for other organizations so to overcome this private hospitals are being set up so that government does not become monopoly of healthcare then efficiency of services so improve the efficiency you know if you have go to the government hospital you will have to wait for a long time to see the doctor there is a long queue then you cannot have private uh, visit you cannot be seen immediately by the doctor whereas if you go to a private hospital you pay more you can go see the doctor immediately so increased efficiency of services present in private hospitals cost effectiveness this is a little tricky because usually government hospitals give free treatment but the same thing you get good quality care at a low cost in private hospitals okay though it may not be cost effective compared to the government hospitals you have cost effective treatment based on uh, services for example in karigiri hospital if you undergo uh, um, hernia surgery for example the patient has to pay probably 20000 whereas if you undergo hernia surgery in apollo hospital the patient has to pay nearly 1 lakh so that is cost effectiveness in a private hospital then it reduces the tax payers money how do you think the government hospital are, is running who pays for the poor patients treatment it is the people who pay tax whoever pays tax the government spends on the government hospitals so 
when more private hospitals are set up and people go there the number of people who go to government hospitals is less so, so there is less expenditure from the uh, taxpayers money then public hospitals cannot make profit but private hospitals make profit so they give better service at a higher cost so whoever is willing to pay higher cost of treatment they go to the private hospitals and they get treatment there then the next thing is private companies pay more you know private hospitals like narvi hospital they pay more to their staff so the best talents from government hospital people will resign and go and join places like narvi hospital because there is higher salary whereas government hospital the salary is based on the grade everybody gets the same salary if they are in a particular grade so but the private hospitals pay based on the talent if you are well talented you get more if you are poor talented you get less pay so that is the next thing and finally competition makes private hospitals work better if there are five hospitals they will fight with each other to give better services so that they get more profit whereas government hospital there will be no competition they will work how they work they will, it will not improve it will not become bad but private hospitals keep on improving all the time and benefits of privatization in private hospitals there is no political interference whereas in government hospitals always the politicians will interfere with the treatment with the hospital with what they buy all these things okay but there are also some problems and negative effects of privatization what are they the first thing is talent moves from pri- public to private hospital because of high salaries we have already seen this people working in government hospitals if they are given much more salary by private hospitals they go there and work okay then public interest is lost and profit becomes the motive if you privatize so when you create more and more private hospitals the treatment is not the focus but making money becomes the focus the doctors are not interested in getting patients cured but they are interested in making more money that is a private hospital then the cost of treatment becomes very high so based on in private in government hospital all the treatment is free whereas the private hospitals the cost of treatment keeps increasing all the time private companies and hospitals do not follow the labor laws labor laws will tell 8 hours of duty you have to get minimum pay like this but private hospitals they do not pay like that they pay less to people like paramedical staff they pay less they pay very much to expert doctors but they pay very less to other other category of staff and that is the negative aspect of privatization then the system becomes fragmented many people do the same work you know if there is two or three government hospitals taking care of the whole population of vellore it becomes easy but now we have 10 to 20 private hospitals one government hospital and so many ngos so where does a patient go so the system of healthcare becomes fragmented because more people are doing the same work of healthcare then private hospitals are not accountable you know if some patient dies in the government hospital the doctor has to report to the dean the dean has to report to the health minister whereas in a private hospital they do not have the system and the accountability is not there okay so i have written this in points so that it will be useful for you we have seen privatization the definition then what are the different private hospitals public hospitals the reasons for privatization benefits of privatization and negative aspects of privatization okay hope you understood this topic next we go to managerialism okay what is the what are two words here manager is the first word okay what is a manager a person who manages okay here in this context we are looking at healthcare and organizations so managerialism means a person who is managing a hospital okay so usually who manages the hospital in karigiri who manages the hospital it's dr jerry who is a ms mch is a super specialist doctor so most hospitals are being managed by healthcare professionals who are doctors okay but slowly things are changing and managers who have studied administration are given the ownership of hospital so in some hospitals okay 
the people who are the head of the hospital administrator is the not a doctor but a manager who has studied administration okay so that is called as managerialism it refers to a change in healthcare using managerial symbols okay so why does that change happen the change happens because health professional is usually compassionate and they feel patient's benefit is much more important than money or income okay any doctor any nurse any health professional any medical sociologist any pharmacist what will they feel they feel money is secondary patient benefit is primary this is the traditional view but a manager who is not a health professional what will be what will he think he will think that profit and benefit is much more important than patient care okay so slowly hospitals and healthcare organizations are changing from professional medical people to the hands of professional managers so this is called managerialism hope you understood i have tried to keep it simple what are the reasons for managerialism okay slowly we are seeing every organization should become profitable cost should be less cost effectiveness should be there so in every treatment we have to minimize the cost give better treatment so this is one reason for managerialism then managers try to improve the performance and outcome okay so every manager wants performance to be improved so that is reason for managerialism the hospital services have to become user friendly suppose a doctor is the head of a organization they will what have they studied they have studied mbbs they have studied ms surgery so what do they know they know more about patients hospital and patient care do they know about technology how technology can be used in healthcare how technology can be used for cost effectiveness they will know very less so when managers are used for hospital services it become the hospital becomes user friendly and better solution is available this helps in improving the performance of the hospital so performance standards will improve and it will also help in workload ceilings you know for example a doctor will work for 12 hours 20 hours without sleeping without eating also but a manager he will follow the labor laws and tell every person has to work for 8 hours and then they have to go home so workload ceilings will be maintained by managers so these are the reasons for managerialism okay so what are the effects of managerialism what happens when managers take over when managers take over health organizations like hospitals they become the head of hospitals okay for them money and profit is much more important than the benefit and health of the patient or community so if doctors or health professionals are heads of the hospitals for them benefit patient benefit and health of patient or community is much more important okay the other thing is when managers take over the autonomy or freedom of the health professionals is affected they cannot make decisions but the manager will make the decisions but still there are some benefits of managerialism what are the benefits of managerialism the profits will be helpful even though we see and we tell patient care is much more important than money ultimately in every organization money is important you know because of corona virus cmc hospital is cutting down the salary by 30% for its staff so if they had made lot of profit previously then it would be able they would have survived for a long time whereas private hospitals they have enough money in store so they will survive for a longer time so the profits ultimately will benefit will help that is why managerialism is better managers are trained in patient needs okay so we say one of the problems of managers is they do not know about patient care but when we treat the ma- when we train the managers to take care of patients and understand the needs of patients they also became they become changed so they can both function as a manager and they can function as a health professional so they get both the training and they understand the care of patient and benefits and they also understand profits so they do both things then managers are professional 
okay because they are professional people they improve the effectiveness and efficiency of any hospital and healthcare organization so the waiting time of patients will become less the number of staff unnecessary staff will be removed more services will be given to patients and technology is used in the uh, hospitals so all this is have done by the professional managers and because of all that there is increased productivity more patients are seen more people get benefit and the quality of the hospital is improved so you get quality assurance and high standards of quality in all the patient care activities but there are some problems related to managerialism which we have already seen one thing is reduced autonomy to health professionals that is health professionals like doctors nurses they have less freedom because they have to work under the manager previously they were the people who were the top people in a hospital or healthcare organization now in managerialism they have to work under the manager so they lose their freedom the next thing is conflict between manager and health professionals so we already talked for a health professional patient treatment and patient care is more important for a manager money is more important so there can be conflicts between both so how do we solve this we can give training to doctors nurses and other health professionals to undergo training as a manager we give them administrative training so they they are allowed to study a mbbs doctor is told to t- study mba hospital administration so that means a doctor becomes a manager so they know both how to treat a patient as well as how to manage a hospital so this reduces the conflict and overcomes the problems of managerialism that is why we see a lot of doctors these days they also study mba hospital management or hospital administration so that they are not only health professionals but they are also uh, managers i hope you understood these topics see you in the next class